All right, tubes. Got something pretty interesting here for you today. We're going to be talking about timing. Now, timing somewhat of a uh, complicated subject, and I could probably do a whole video on it if I wanted to. Uh, but either way, uh, just to give you a real quick primer on the subject here, uh, here's the deal. We describe timing in terms of angle relative to top dead center. So what we're talking about is when exactly our spark is firing during the combustion cycle. So top dead center is, of course, when the piston is as high as it go goes and the crank is perfectly straight up and down. Now, any time before top dead center is when we want our spark to fire. Now, that's basically because you want your maximum uh, pressure in your cylinder to occur at some point after top dead center. And due to the speed of the engine rotating around, it, it's a fact that you want it to occur sometime before top dead center. That time can vary, uh, but one thing's true. There is an optimum point where your timing will yield the most power. Now, there's a certain, uh, there's a little, uh, little caveat there. The thing is, one of the other things you have to watch out for is knock. Now, knock can be caused by uh, a fuel that has uh, inadequate octane. Um, your intake air temperature might be very high. You might be running a lot of boost. There's a lot of things that can cause knock. But in either way, uh, what knock is, is when you have your spark igniting the flame front here, but then either high pressure, high temperature, a hot spot in the cylinder, or any other number of things causes some other fuel to spontaneously combust. Now when that happens, you have these two flame fronts fighting each other, and that puts a lot of stress on the engine. You have a lot more pressure in the cylinder, uh, it puts a lot more stress on your piston, your crank, everything. Either way, it's not good. Now on a Miata, naturally aspirated, you uh, can get away with about 14 or, or 18 degrees of, of timing advance, and, and that usually gives you some good power, and as long as you're running a uh, uh, 93 octane fuel you really generally speaking won't get any knock now when you get into boost the situation kind of changes uh, it's generally regarded as true that the uh, the, the good a good timing uh, target uh, when you're in boost for an intercooled Miata is about eight degrees before top dead center and six degrees top dead center uh, if you don't have an intercooler the easiest option by far to make sure your timings at a safe point uh, is just to advance, I mean, uh, retard your timing to 6 degrees, just set your base timing at 6 degrees. Now the problem with that is, is that it's going to rob you of a lot of power elsewhere. Whenever you're not in boost, your timing is still going to be at 6 degrees, and that means you're not going to be making the optimum power that you could be. So our particular solution to this problem is going to be the bipes here. Now what this thing does is it allows you to set your base timing at 14 degrees or whatever you want, and then this little device will take uh, air temperature, uh, airflow, and your RPM, and it'll retard timing as needed. So that way, for example, if you're at uh, maximum boost, uh, it'll pull your timing back to 6 degrees. But when you're not in boost, it'll stay at 14. So it allows you to maintain a, a, a higher timing advance and make good power when you're not in boost, but then also still be safe when you are in boost. So here's our little wiring uh, diagram here to show you what's going on here. 12 volt and ground are obviously pretty self-explanatory. That's how the unit gets power. And there are wires going into the ECU, which are 12 volt and ground. So we just tap into those. Pretty straightforward. Uh, for air temp and airflow, uh, it's almost the same deal. What we're doing is we're not interrupting them. We're just splicing into them so we can get the signal off of those two. So that's two other wires. Now the last thing is the crank angle sensor. Now for that, we actually have to interrupt it. So what happens is your, your signal comes from your crank angle sensor. It gets cut from the ECU, goes through the bipes first, then comes out of the bipes, goes into your ECU. So there's only one wire we're actually going to have to cut. The rest of them we're just going to do a T-splice into. So it's not that hard. Now, if you buy this thing brand new, you won't get this fancy uh, wiring harness with it. All you get is the unit itself and the uh, the connector here and so what you have to do is you have to insert wires into this connector now as far as colors go you can do whatever you want what this guy did which I think was a good idea is he used red and black for the power that makes sense uh, blue and green for the airflow and temperature uh, those can be any colors just use different ones and then you use the same colors for the uh, for the the, cam, the uh, cam angle sensor and obviously he made these I think he made it about six feet longer so you of course want to have enough that 
this thing gets plugged into the ECU and then wherever you, you mount the uh, bipes at, you, you can get to it. Uh, and then on the other end, he put a bunch of, uh, bunch of connectors here so that way you can easily unplug it. So instead of hard wiring, splicing these in and having to cut it if you ever take this out, what you did was we have these little things. So for example, this is gonna be for our, I think our air temp. Uh, we're just gonna splice this in, I and mean, it'll have a connector on it, and just plug it right in. And then on the cam angle sensor one, what he did is one of them is a, is a male end, the other is a female. So that way, what he can do is you can put the, uh, the uh, same connectors on the wire that he cuts on the ECU. That way, you ever want to bypass this thing, all you can do is plug them in. Uh, unplug this from your ECU and then just plug the two on the ECU in and then that'll that'll bypass this thing You can see here looking at the connector this these are your uh, these are where all of your wires go uh, That's obviously a very useful thing and then down here I don't recommend that you go by colors because colors some can sometimes end up being wrong So I would go by the pin numbers, but they give you in the instructions here uh, Which one is which for for each thing you're hooking up? And then it also gives you the, uh, the pinout of the uh, connector so you can find exactly what it is you're looking for. Alright, so after that record length uh, intro there, let's install this thing. Here's one important tip here. When you wire these, uh, there's one thing that you do need to pay attention to, and that is the uh, connectors that you put on your cam angle sensor. We put a female on one side that we cut and a male on the other, and then the corresponding terminals on the, uh, on the wiring harness that we make up. Now, it's important to note that you have to, there's, there's a right way and a wrong way to plug these in. There's an out and an in. And you can you can refer back to the wiring diagram, but the important part is is that whichever one is farthest over, that's your cam angle sensor signal out. That's the one you want going into your ECU. So whatever is connected to this wire, in this case, uh, it's this it's this yellow female connector right here. Uh, if you're going to use a female on that side, you have to make sure you use a male on the ECU side. Otherwise, you're going to plug in your signals backwards, and that that will cause a problem. So as you can see here, I tidied up all the uh, all the carpeting back there and uh, slid the seat back into place here. And so I just have the wire coming out from behind the seat. I could probably uh, Velcro it to the side here. I don't know how well that would look. But uh, in either case, I mean, you can mount this thing wherever you want it. But the only other important thing is uh, setting this thing up and tuning it. Now, I'm going to go into the full tuning. Same thing like, like what I did with the, uh, the FMU. I'll go into the full tuning when it comes to it as far as, you know, once I have the turbo on. But for the time being, what I've done is I'm going to leave it plugged in here. And uh, I've just set it up here for the, uh, for the least amount of retard possible. So what, what this is going to do right now uh, is for the, the maximum timing it'll pull for airflow is I think like 2 or 4 degrees, the lowest it can go. Uh, the, the timing that'll pull for higher intake temperature is like 2 degrees or whatever the lowest that it'll go. And, and so on. And of course it's set up for a 1.8 uh, liter. 
because uh, you can you do have that option you can pick which which motor you have this will work for a 1.6 and a 1.8 if you're installing this before you have your turbo installed and you just want to run the least amount of retard possible uh, that this is this is what's going to do it here these these settings as I have it here but anyway enough enough rant and rave and that's going to be the end of this video uh, hopefully you found it interesting I know it was pretty uh, pretty lengthy and pretty technical uh, but I'm trying to make these as educational as possible and interesting. So uh, let me know down in the comments if you liked the video. Hit the like, subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later, tubes.